Hi, I'm John, the anti-poverty engineer Termel, commenting on Sir Evelyn de Rothschild's December the 1st call for action. At December 1st, Article 2008, Sir Evelyn de Rothschild calls for action. So one of the guys from the family who screwed it up over the past 200 years wants us to fix things, you know. All of us, countries, corporations, and consumers have neglected basic principles. Oh, you mean basic principles could have avoided all these depressions and crashes over the past 200 years while his family was in charge of the world's money? <clears throat> Ethics. We've lost sight of an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Well, speak for yourself, sir. Most people put in big hours for the few bucks they get. Careful management. We have indulged our wants without the taxes or the prices or the cash to pay for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He luckily didn't have to use credit for his wants and needs. He's a billionaire. But other people who had to use credit to get food for the kids. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> Oversight. Public relations and spin have replaced disclosure and dis transparency. Casual yet complex accounting and accommodating rating agencies left us blissfully unaware of the problems, and we reveled in our ignorance. Well, you might have reveled in your ignorance, sir, but poor people weren't reveling. Hubris has replaced community responsibility as a requirement for executive positions. Well, you bought your politicians. Don't complain about the people you bought. You chose them. American automobile executives and British bankers have been unable to form their lips into an apology. Hey, why don't you start? <laughs> Yet their institutions lie in ruins and the rest of us are left feeling embarrassed for them. Oh, your bank's doing okay, is it? Their customers worry that their savings or their working capital will just vanish. Their mortgage will be transferred to a new institution they've never heard of. Their employees wonder which of their colleagues or they themselves will be unemployed in the coming week with bleak prospects for working again anytime soon. I guess you're not too worried, are you, Mr. Billionaire? After all, the interest you get coming from those poor suckers are paying it, you know. You don't have to work. Where is the shame of those who only months earlier boasted of ever-increasing profits, of ever-more clever products, of ever-easier loans? Well, what about the shames of people like you who get unearned income? Do nothing for your money, loan shark. Hey, remaining credit. The U.S. automakers may be the worst of the lot so far. Years of incompetence. And now maneuvering in the halls of Congress for a massive bailout. Well, nowhere near as big as the bankers bailout. You think the automakers screwed up? What about the bankers? Management prefers to hold onto private corporate jets rather than push for fuel efficient standards to make their products more competitive. Cheap shot talking about a bauble of a jet when we're talking billions and other issues. Union members would rather hold on to their gold plated pensions for life than to save their companies. So they should give up their comp their pensions, eh, to save their companies, so that rich guys like you can keep collecting on your bonds and your shares, right? Yeah, yeah. People who've worked all their lives should give up their pensions to save your corporations, right? Why should taxpayers help those who have so frequently refused to accept responsibility for themselves? Well, it was your loan sharking that drained them of all their money, sir. If the U.S. government used a, uses up its remaining credit to help the auto industry carry on as usual, who will lend the country the money to repair its bridges, build its power stations, clean its water, and fuel its navy? Where will the money come from, says the banker who doesn't know his bank creates money? Unless he's lying. Slow revival. 30 years ago, New York City found itself in a position similar to the GM, Ford, and Chrysler today. They asked Washington for help. The government refused. Instead, New York balanced its budget, taxed itself, reduced hiring, negotiated better labor contracts, and gradually worked itself back to fiscal health. So, balancing your budget means having cutbacks to poor people's services. Taxing itself means raising taxes for everybody. Reducing hiring means less services for everybody and less jobs. Negotiated better labor contracts means cutting funding to workers. All stuff that a banker would love, right? It took more than 10 years to get fiscal health back. Yeah, yeah. 
take responsibility. This era of struggle may last as long until we can be generous in accepting fault for our predicament. Hey, you caused it, loan shark, not the victims. We will have difficulty dropping our suspicions about others so that we can get on with repairing the damage. Hey, you don't even know the damage you did and you don't even know how to repair it. Unless action is taken soon. What action? Oh yeah, cut back on workers' pay, make people give up their pensions. That's the action the loan shark wants, eh? We can only see We can only see a long time of difficult and very onerous problems continuing. Could be one or two years. Yeah, yeah, in the Depression it was ten. And only stopped when they were willing to go to kill themselves in a war to deliver bombs for free to the Germans when a year before they couldn't deliver food for free to themselves. How come? Where'd the money come from to cause fight a war that wasn't there to grow food? The loan sharks kept the taps shut. So it is therefore essential that management must take a firm look at its problems and accept its fault and redeem them. Hey, look in a mirror, buster. A lot of talk and a lot of words have been written, don't we know? And in the end, action has to be taken, and action must be taken very soon if we're not going to see this stretched out over many, many years. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the action that Mr. Lone Shark wants, Mr. Evelyn Rothschild wants, is for all poor people to bite the bullet, while fat cats like him stay fat. I don't hear about you giving up your loan shark usury. I don't hear about you contributing anything. Just everybody else should do something, right? Well, I disagree. My job is to throw you loan sharks out of the temple, fix the money system so poor people can survive. If I sound angry, it's because I, like billions of others on the planet, have suffered want in a world of plenty. I suffered the shame of not being able to go on field trips while the bus left with empty seats. Maybe if I got to go, I felt the shame of having to walk around the exhibition watching all the kids on the rides to see which three rides looked like fun I'd go on at the end of the day because I didn't have enough money. So I've suffered want like millions in a world where there were plenty of rides in a world of abundance because of the inept or evil performance running the world's banking system of your family for the past 200 years called Mort Gage Death Gamble, the results of which we see around us and we can all lay at your feet. Now, I can forgive and forget. Yeah. Because Ezekiel in the Bible gives a great story which explains. Ezekiel 18. And God says, suppose there's a righteous man. He does not oppress anyone, he do, but returns what he took in pledge for a loan. He does not lend at usury or take excessive interest. Usury being on money and interest being on cows. This man is righteous, he will surely live, declares the sovereign Lord. Suppose he has a violent son. He oppresses the poor and needy. He does not return what he took in pledge. He lends at usury. Will such a man live? He will not. Because he has done all these detestable things, he will surely be put to death and his blood will be on his own head. But suppose this son has a son who sees all the sins his father commits, and though he sees them, he does not do such things. He does not oppress anyone or require a pledge for a loan. He takes no usury or excessive interest. He will not die for his father's sins. He will surely live. The soul who sins is the one who will die. But if a wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed and keeps all my decrees and does what is just and right, he will surely live. He will not die. None of the offenses he has committed will be remembered against him. Because of the righteous things he has done, he will live. Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the sovereign Lord? Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their wicked ways and live? Well, if God can forgive and forget if the evil turn from their wicked ways, I can too. So, what can you do? Well, I've announced I want to be prime minister, president, prime engineer of the planet in my first post as king of the paupers and i've said that i want to have a global aspirin asa is the three words necessary the acronym for amnesty security anonymity starting with security everyone has to have an account at a time bank where time is collateral too not just gold and possessions. A time bank, a unilets time bank, like in Resolution C6 to Governments in the Millennium Declaration. And amnesty for everyone. 
anyone for financially induced crime if you did it for the money, because money was in short supply. Once there's plenty of money, you got no more excuse. You're forgiven. So, amnesty for everybody from the lowest, lowest torturer paid in the third world to the most loftiest loan shark in Switzerland. Everybody's forgiven once we end hell and get into heaven. So, how can you help? Well, you know people going to Davos. You might know people going to the World Social Forum in Belém. Unilets. Find it. Get it on a resolution of the Davos or at the World Social Forum. Do what you can to promote a worldwide time bank. Unilets. And if that doesn't happen, well then get your own bank to offer not just Canadian accounts and American accounts, but time bank accounts. So you, as one of the world's biggest bankers, can fix it yourself unless we talk the world into all doing it together at the same time in the next three, four days. So, free all the debt slaves and make every man a king. And my duty as king of the paupers, banking systems engineer, will be done. Amen.